You can go ahead and turn to Matthew 25. Um, interesting in this particular passage, I, I haven't really preached on this one that much the way NIV does it. NIV and Matthew 25, if you have a, one of the newer versions of it, it, it says the parable of the bags of gold. And uh, I've preached on it in different Luke and, and Matthew and other places, but the newer ones make it real to us because it calls the bags of gold. And uh, so since we know gold, you know, other parables, they say uh, the, a rich man gave him minas. And we don't know what a mina is, you know, or he gave them talents, and we think they could sing and dance, but it doesn't mean ta those kind of talents. So when it says bags of gold, um, that makes it easier for me. It's, you know, I, I get it. I get what that means. So uh, uh, in Matthew 25, we'll not read the whole thing. We'll just read verse 14. Everybody ready? Father, let this word go forth. I want them to get it. I have no reason for me to get it. I have nothing in this. I have nothing that I want. I just want to give, give, give. Verse 14 from 25. Again, so uh, again means he's still going. He's talking about the, what the kingdom of God is like, what the kingdom of heaven is like, and here again, it's like this. It will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. There's great secrets in this, and I want to back up, and then as we, just to save time, we, we go through it, and this is the, the bags of gold help me. In this particular one, there's other ones where it's different numbers. There's 10 and, and different ones, but in this one, it's a, it's a five, two, and one. Okay, so he gets these people together, and he gives uh, one, five bags of gold, one, two bags of gold, and one, one bag of gold, okay? So it's real simple. Uh, and uh, then he tells them to go do something with it, and the uh, one that he gave five to is very similar to the other parables. He gave five to, the one he gave five to comes back and says, see, I've gained you, I've gained five more. Okay, the one who gave two, see, I've gained two more, and you know the other parables, the one he gave one to, what happened? He came back with just the one, right? And when he comes back with just the one, he gives his reason. He said, the, 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 the rich guy, the owner, and the, the master, and all that says, why? Why did you just come back with one? I mean, you could have at least put it in the bank, you know, because he went and hid it. He was afraid of losing it. And he said, you at least could have gone to the bank and got some interest or something. And he gives himself away, okay, because he's a servant too. You have to understand, all three are servants, and they're entrusted servants, but he just gave one to him. And he gives himself away, which is the big problem. He gives himself away. He says, well, I was afraid. I knew what kind of person you are. The guy who gave him one bag of gold, he went and hid it because he said, I was afraid or I was nervous because I know what kind of person you are. And so that directed him in what he did with it. I guess fear, I'm going to mess up or I'll come back and maybe, what if I lose the bag? And then what, I know what kind of person you are and you come back and you turn on me. So the misjudgment of this person is going to mess up the one bag. And so the one who got five more got to keep it. Now that person has ten, right? The one who got two got two more. Now that person has four. The one who got one, what happens? One is taken away, and the one is given to the one who has 10. Now the one who has 10 has 11, okay? So the parable then is that we normally get is uh, three men were given this wealth, and then it says, to him who has more, say more, because this is not our culture, to him ha who has more will be given. Our culture is who him who to that person who has, don't give any more to him. Go give to the person who has not. Give to the person who doesn't have anything. Isn't that our culture? Holiday time's coming up and we're going to see people all over the city gathering money for people and gifts for people who have not. Here Jesus says, Take from that person the one and give it to the one who has mo the most. He who has will be given more. So this helps us understand how God thinks, how Jesus thinks. He thinks in terms of multiplication, multiplying. 
God told Adam, right, I'm going to give you all this. You get to have everything. Take it. Take dominion. Take control. Listen. Take control of what I give you. And multiply. Right? Take control of your environment. Take control of your circumstances. If you don't take control of your circumstances, your circumstances will take control of you. That's just me. That gee, God didn't say that. I did. But he doesn't mind. But... Um, Okay, so take control and go multiply what you have. So, the, so here, the basic story that everybody preaches, including myself, which is correct, it's, it should be preached, is take what you have, be a good steward, multiply, right? And if you do well, you will then get more walking in this kingdom. You will gain more, okay? The one that misjudged, the rich guy, the, the uh, what did they call him? The, um, a man going on, just, he was rich, I guess, uh, in this one. It was misjudged. He lost his bag of gold. He gets, he, now he, he had nothing. Now he has nothing. Gained nothing. Correct? So we need to teach that. It's worth teaching how you handle what you have. A good steward of what you have. Great teaching. Okay? Needs to be done. I believe in it totally, how God thinks, how God multiplies. But that's not what we're going to talk about today, even though it's worthwhile. I want to teach you something deeper that, that I, I've been walking in more and want you to get it because I don't want you to miss what? There's a, there's a kingdom secret here, okay? And Jesus talks about that. He says, you know, the secrets and the mysteries are not told to everybody, he says, to the children, I reveal mysteries and secrets to certain people. And there's some secrets here that I, have, I, I don't think I've ever heard really much preached. Now, the one, what I just told you I've heard preached, but not much what I'm about to tell you. Okay. So I don't want you to miss the secrets. It's right here in front of you. Okay. So when we learn this, uh, the, the, we, we understand the first secret. Okay. The first secret is starting to be revealed. It says, okay, um, to understand. He... A man entrusted, okay, we're getting, getting the kingdom now. A, a certain man, obviously he's rich, entrusted his wealth to somebody else. Okay? That's where this all starts. Yes, 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 yes. They needed to be good stewards. Yes, yes, yes. They needed to produce. Yes, they needed to be good, good with it. They needed to be smart. They needed to, you know, right? There's a lot of teachings after the fact. But the, the mystery of all this is, what, what, what's going on here? He says the kingdom of God is somebody entrusting somebody else. Somebody who has is going to entrust wealth to somebody who has not. You can live on that one. You can start your whole Christian walk and say, really? Yeah. Yeah. He says the kingdom of God is like somebody went on a journey. Hmm. Know anybody that's gone on a journey anywhere? Like a Messiah? And when he left, he entrusted his wealth to these servants. Wealth. Okay. So that's the first. He entrusted wealth to them. Now, okay, okay. So now, like I said, we concentrate on the how. How the wealth was handled after they got it, and we should. But we're going to move on. Because the secret here is not how. Not the first secret. Because there would be no how if there wasn't a who. See, we, we just skip over the who. There's a who here. There's a person here who entrusted them. How did they get there? I mean, if you don't get entrusted with the wealth, then it's not going to do me any good to tell you how to handle it. Be faithful. Do it. Do it. All the teachings that on the how, 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 how you're supposed to be faithful. Well, not if they don't hand you anything. It's not going to matter. If you don't get any of it. Most people don't get any of it. Okay, so we're, we're really good at teaching how, but there's a who here. And somebody gave them wealth. 
Now, if you study their culture, this would be, uh, they're called servants, so we wouldn't say, these are not strangers. We think like, okay, just pick somebody off the street, a poor person, you're poor, here, take this money, go do something with it. No, these are not strangers, okay? These are people that are known. They know each other. They're in some kind of deal here. So they, they know each other, and they are entrusted. So they had to have this who, this person. If they don't have this person, they don't have this who, then they're not going to need to worry about how. Do you see the first underlying? I'm giving it away maybe a little early, a little bit, but do you understand? If you don't have a, this who person, then you don't need to worry about how. You can study it, but it, it's not going to do you any good. And, and so the reason is you, us, we, we have grown up, we, all of us, have grown up in a how culture. We live in a how-to culture. And that, that's how it is. And, and so you, you go to school, whatever level, you go to school to learn the how-to, right? You ask your parents, why do I got to go to school? I don't want to go to school. You got to go to school so you can learn how to spell. Right? Go to school. You need to learn how to spell. You need to learn how to write. You need to go to school so you can learn how to. Because you, if you don't learn how to, you will not get a job. You will not be able to make money. You will not be able to do anything. So go learn some how to. And then graduate with some how to says you've got some how to. Right? And then, one of the deception is we don't realize what's happening in our country. What's happening is we have now, we have the church, we have a church culture, and it's the how-to church. Everything's a how-to. You go to the bookstore, it's full of, as soon as you walk in, you're going to see the how-to. How to be a better dad. How to be a better mom. How to prosper. How to pray. How to heal the sick. Right? How to be a prophet. It's all over the internet, of course, all these things. How to, the how-to, the how-to. How to grow in God. Right? So every, people eat that up. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that's where we, most of we grow up in a how-to culture in a world. And so when we think how-to, we think how-to, we have a thing in our culture, in our minds, that how-to is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. Now, in our culture, of course, if you, if you go apply for a job, have you ever applied? For, okay, so you applied for a job, and you go, you apply for a job, right? And so you you go maybe to the job, and you get in line with everybody else. Maybe there's some other people applying for a job, so you get in line with everybody else, and you expect them to be equal opportunity employers, right? It's all equal. Everybody's sitting around there, and everybody wants that job, and then whoever gets the job, we're comfortable with it. Maybe you won't get the job. But the person who does get the job should be equal to you or better in ability, skill, education, right? You might just say, well, they had more experience than I did, so they got the job. Are you comfortable with that? They, they, had, a, they, they, had, four, they had two more years of school than me. <clears throat> they, had, they have a master's degree. I didn't have one, so they got the job. And are you okay with that? You wanted the job, but you're okay with it because they had more experience. They had, they've worked long. And so you're okay because you see, they actually had more how-to than you had the how-to. So you're okay with it. You wish you got the job, but you're okay with it. But what about if you go there and you apply and you're sitting around with everybody else and you got the skill, you think, I am very much, I am very much uh, ready for this job. I have, all, I have the qualifications for this job. I have the education for the job. It pays what I think I should make. So you go through the whole thing, and then all of a sudden you realize that the person who got the job got the job because they grew up with the boss's son. How's that make you feel? You go, oh, that's okay. You know, they were friends. And you go like, well, I know he's not, that, the boss's son was not near as qualified. He didn't even go to college. Kind of like our president's son, right? And so, like, he didn't even go to college. <clears throat> he didn't even study. He didn't even have any qualifications to run a company. But, but, but instead, he got the job for millions of dollars. How's that make you feel? 
like, and so, and so, I just dated this in case we get a new president, it doesn't count. And so, <laughs> but, but how does that make you feel? You go, are you okay with that? Like, well, they've been friends. You know, he grew up with the boss's son, and so I understand it. It's okay. I'm more qualified. I went to school. I got a school debt. <clears throat> I got to pay off my car. You know, I got a lot of things, but it's okay. They were friends. How does that make you feel? How does it make you feel when someone gets it over you by who they knew, who they know? Does that make you, are you okay with that? No, we're not. We don't like that. We do not want people in our culture <coughs> to get a job or advancement based on who they know. We want it to be based on what you can do. Everybody, we want it equal, right? <coughs> they, we don't want it because all of a sudden they know somebody that we didn't know and it doesn't make us feel good. So, so now, just leave that for a second and let's go back to our first secret. Okay, hold on to that. Our first secret is this. Some people were entrusted with wealth because of who they knew. There was no how, it was just who they knew. Just hold on to everything, okay. So that was our first secret. They knew somebody that had wealth, all right? And we just know that that's not our culture. We just, we're, we're, how, we're how two people, so we're just kinda going along here, okay? Now we need a second secret to help us understand the first secret till we get down to the end and know all the secrets, right? Okay. So anyway, now there's a second secret that you might not know, all right? In the, most people don't know this. In the kingdom of God, there is no middle class. How many here would probably raise your hand and say, I grew up middle class? Don't be afraid, it's not a trick question. The middle is the biggest, right, in, in our country. That's the point. Most people grow up middle, right? Most people think like middle, right? Middle is the biggest group. And so that's kind of a problem with us if we enter the kingdom of God, middle thinkers, when there is no middle class. There is no middle class. In fact, <clears throat> the, you can test this. When Jesus was ministering or growing up or the first century, there was no middle class in Jesus' day. There could have been, there tried to be, <clears throat> but because they were occupied by Rome, Rome made sure there was an upper class. Some of the Pharisees were upper because they were, they were in cooperation with Romans, but there was the upper class and then there's the lower class. They might have been middle class, but Rome took their land or religion took their land or whatever. So people who would have been middle are not. So there was lower class, poor, lower class at least, and upper class. There's no middle. Can you say that? Can you repeat that back so you know? There's no middle in Jesus' day. Now, you'll read your Bible wrong, not understanding how God operates if you think there's a middle because you'll put yourself there. And there ain't one, okay? So there's no middle class in the kingdom of God. There's none in Jesus' day because <clears throat> the rich got rich and the poor got poor and they liked it that way. And that's why they were under this tremendous... Um, bondage to Rome is because there was no middle. Nobody could get ahead. They made all the Jews as poor and the Romans or those in cooperation with them like tax collectors. They were rich because they were in, in, okay. Now we though, we got a problem. I'll go quickly on this so we don't keep you too long today. We'll go quickly, but we, we have three classes of people, right? Can you say what they are? We got, we got, uh, I don't know what order you want to do it. We got three classes of people. We got the lower class, we got the middle class, and we got upper class, right? Kind of like being on the Titanic. Okay, so uh, the lower class though, the lower class, uh, I call that most of them, this is generalization, this doesn't apply to everybody, right? Got, everybody got that, doesn't apply to everybody. Generalization sometimes gets you in trouble, but okay. Generalization, we have a lower class. The lower class generally has a poverty or poor or lower class attitude is, I cannot contribute. I cannot produce. I cannot contribute. I am in survival mode. My lights will be turned off tomorrow. I need help now. 
okay? I can't give in the offering. I can't help somebody else because I am in survival mode, okay? So I have to have help. I am not a contributor. That's a generalization, but that just helps you get it, okay? Then there's the middle, and the middle are what I call just regular people. Regular people in the middle. Here's how regular people generally, this may not be you, don't get upset and walk out or any, any, at least don't walk out on for this. Okay, okay, here's regular people. Here's how regular people think, okay, about money, usually, generalization, okay. So the poor people, I cannot contribute, I'm in survival. Regular people, okay, they make money, they have a job, they're middle, middle people, middle regular people, okay? So they get a paycheck, they get money, they got a little left over. What do they do with the leftover? Money is used to stay comfortable and entertained. It's a mentality. They're not gonna tell you that. They're gonna say, hey, you know what? I, 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 the only thing I want money for is to be comfortable and entertained. They're not gonna tell you that, but watch how they spend it. They spend it, they think. Okay, 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 I'm gonna work all day, pay my bills, and then I'm going to go home and do nothing. So you're sitting all day thinking, I can't wait to get home and do nothing. And, and watch TV. That's what they're thinking. Some of you are guilty of this. Doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means you're not like me as a person, but that doesn't mean you're bad. You can be anybody you want to be. I'm just describing a person, okay? Money, money, but money to the middle people is generally, it's to, it, it's to make me comfortable, okay? Now, my family knows, there's more even here today, that's not me, okay? But that's regular people, comfortable, okay? Normal, regular people, middle class people have that, I'm waiting for something to happen, I want something to happen, I want to advance, I want, but I'm just, I'm just waiting. I got, I'm waiting to see, okay. I gotta go quicker on this, okay. Now, middle class, regular people make this, not everybody, you, it might not be you, but they tend to let their children learn from their own mistakes. So I'm gonna just let my children learn how life works, money works, Jobs work, I'll just let them, they'll learn from their own mistakes. So I'm just gonna let them learn, okay? Middle people, this is not everybody, but do you agree that middle class people, regular folks, have just a little bit of mistrust of really wealthy people? You gotta kinda look at yourself and say, uh, well, yeah, probably, <laughs> right? It's just a general, maybe it's not you, but generally, generally. And the last one then um, of uh, regular, um, regular folks, middle class people, they tend to lean on past, joys of the past, victories of the past, or even defeats of the past. Right, they look to the past. Oh man, I'm, I'm just, I just can't get over that. Oh man, you remember when we had such a great time? Man, life was so great then. Oh, we, we, yeah. It's a backwards, backwards, right? They're leaning off of memories. Okay, all right, so that's middle, regular people. Doesn't mean you're a bad person. It means that you, you're in the middle with most people. Okay, then, then there's wealthy people, okay? Wealthy people do it differently. This is, I'm, I'm not wealthy like wealthy, wealthy, but I think like wealthy, so it's helped me a lot. But okay, wealthy people. Money for wealthy people. Now remember, uh, this is a wealthy man gave wealth to some poor people, right? Okay, wealthy, money is a tool that works for you. This has always been my attitude. I do not work for money. I want money because I want to make money work for me. When I get money, what can I do with it? I'm going to make it work for me, whatever I do for it, with it. Money is a tool that works for you. You'll see that in a minute more. Okay, people of wealth or more prominence in money are people of action. They're not people of waiting. People of action tend to get on the nerves of people in the middle who are waiting. Yes. Just wait. You've always got an idea. You've got, always got a big idea, okay. Anyway. Wealthy people teach their children a wealth mentality or how to be wealthy, how to handle, how to make money work. They teach them a wealth mentality. Wealthy people teach that poverty is evil. Wrong. You'll see that in a minute also. 
and it doesn't make you more spiritual. I hear that, I say that a lot, right? It just makes you more angry. Okay. Wealthy people look to the future. We're gonna make this work, and here's what we're gonna do. 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 Here's what's gonna happen. Here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. Here's what's gonna happen. Whether they're rich, 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 or just well, well, well off, okay, or doing well, or debt-free, which is how we live, debt-free, okay? Okay, we're debt-free, so we look to the future. I look to the future. Okay, now, let's put this together. Go back to the parable. Go back to the parable, okay? Man went on a journey who called his servants and entrusted them with wealth. Gave five, gave two, gave one. Five got ten, two got uh, four. Uh, did I get it right? <laughs> one got one, got it taken away. The one who had ten got eleven. You know the story. Okay. Okay, so let's put it together. No middle class in Jesus' day, so take the middle class out. Got lower class, upper class, and now they are entrusted with wealth. Okay? A wealthy man entrusted wealth to the obvious poor. What does that mean? He said, take this money and make it go to work. Wealthy people see money as something you use to work for you. And you know what? It sounds to me, let me look. Did, I think they got to keep it. He didn't give it to him to get it back. He, he got it to keep it, right? Okay, so then, um, so, so now the ones that got to keep it are not the poor. They got bags of wealth, bags of gold. Okay. So they got to keep it. So a wealthy man entrusted him to the poor, make it work for him. So wealthy people are people of action. Go do something. Go do something, right? Okay. Uh, learn that poverty is evil. The one who had one, what happened to him? It was taken away and he gets thrown out to where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's bad. Like an evil person. Get out of here, you evil thing. Okay. And then last is um, they look to the future, right? The one who has 11, the one who has four, they have a future. The one who has it taken away has zero, no future. Okay? Do you see how that fit? Fit this parable perfectly. Okay. Keep up with me. Here we go. So here's the deal. Now we get to the lessons of it. Here's the deal. Most Christians, most believers I've met, even sitting here or any place in the world, will never become a history maker. Okay? They will never become a history maker because of the way they think. See, most of you have, wait, most Christians have potential. This is my definition. You know what potential is? Potential is a person who could but won't. They could, but they never will. That's potential. That's mine. That's my definition. Okay. Most people who are Christians, right? We all have the same Savior, same Holy Spirit, same Bible, right? But they will never be a history maker or make big impact because they will get in line with everybody else expecting to advance based on their how-to. I I, I'm going to learn how to pray. I'm going to learn how to be a good person. That included. I'm going to learn how to be holy. I'm going to learn how to pray. I'm going to learn how to heal the sick. I'm going to learn how to write. I'm going to learn how to write songs. I'm going to learn how to be a singer. I'm going to learn how to, and I'll get in line with every other singer, every other healing ministry, every other intercessor. Just I'm, I'm in line, and one day... Uh, I'm going to get the breakthrough. God's going to recognize me. People are going to recognize me because I am going to show I know how. Okay? Big, big mistake. Big mistake. It's not going to happen because there is no middle class and, we're, and everybody of the how to learn skilled generation gets in line thinking, my how to is going to get me there because I went to school to learn how to. Now I'm a Christian. I'm going to learn how to. Most will never be history makers because there is no middle class. It does not exist. See, the deception is that once they get the how-to, they will advance. And it's, I understand it because we live in an impersonal society, right? So let's say, uh, let's say for instance, uh, it's so impersonal. Okay, so if you lose your job, what do you do? Okay, okay, 
Well, I got fired. So now I'm going to go collect what? Workman's comp. I've never done that, but I, I've heard of it. Okay. So you, I'm going to collect workman's comp. Okay. It's not enough. enough. Okay. So I'm going to go get, I've never done this, but uh, however you do it, I'm going to get food stamps. Okay. I'm going to get workman's comp, food stamps, and then I'm going to get government cheese. However you, I'm going to get in line for government commodities. Okay. And uh, we'll get by. So you go get in line for workman's comp, and then you go get in line for food stamps, and then you get in line for some f commodity food, right? So I'm going to go get in line, and I'm going to get it, and, and then that, and then, okay, so you're going to go up, and you're going to get your food stamps. You go in line, you're next in line, and then, okay, here's your, I don't know how you get them, but let's say, okay, here's your food stamps. And you throw your arms around the woman that gave it, thank you, thank you, thank you. I just couldn't make it. You are the greatest person. I just, oh, I appreciate you. Thank you for giving me these food stamps. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And the woman's like, huh? Huh? Next. Has nothing to do with your how-to. Has nothing to do with you. It's completely impersonal, right? See, that's our culture. It's impersonal. You can give thanks all you want. And they're like, what are you talking about? You did not earn this. You didn't get it. You didn't do anything. You just, that's, you know, you just get it because you're a citizen. You just get it because you get it, okay? And so that's our, that's our thinking, though. We think that, that, that that's, how, so we'll just get in line in the kingdom of God. We'll just get in line, and then I get my gifts, and I get my ministry, and I'll do, the, and so it's just, I'm a citizen here. And so, and so all of a sudden, I'm gonna break this on you, because I've been doing this a long, long time, and figure out how you can be a history maker, and realize that everything that you're doing is good, the how-to is good, you have to have some how-to afterwards, but this kingdom of God does not run by the how-to. The kingdom of God is all about who you know. It's all about, it's poor people, advance because of who they know. It's an advancement. The Bible says, what do you have anyway that was not given to you? Doesn't mean you earned it, and it doesn't mean you learned the how-to skill that wasn't given to you. So, oh, oh, by the way, in Jesus' culture, what do you do if you don't know a rich person? They obviously knew somebody. What do you do? Well, you do what we would do probably in that culture. You gotta go know a friend of a friend of a friend, and you got a mediator who knew a rich person. What's Jesus? He is our mediator to the rich kingdom. So he becomes our mediator. I don't know the king of the, the kingdom of God where God is all owns the cattle of a thousand hills. I don't know him, but Jesus, my mediator who became man for us and died for us, I can go to him and say, I want to skip the middle, I want to, I'm poor, I am a sinner, everybody's a sinner saved by grace. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I don't have riches, I don't have anything to offer, I don't have the how-to, I don't have the skill, I'm just here just as I am. And Jesus says, all right, let me take you, and I'm gonna take you into this inner circle of grace to where God begins to do exactly what happened here. He's gonna take poor people and he's gonna entrust them with his wealth. Go know the person. Get to know the person. Get to know the person. Get to know the person. So remember, what was the problem? I'm gonna get, try to hurry, hurry, hurry. It's not that bad. I got a few minutes, but I'm going to hurry. Okay, get to know the person. What happened to the guy with the one bag of gold? Where did he go wrong? You see, you might say, well, wait a minute. I'm already a Christian. I already know Jesus. I already know Jesus, so why isn't this working? For you? You know, are you sure you know Jesus? Really know him. You see, we're talking about who, not just I know about him. Because the one that got the one bag of gold obviously knew the rich man. But he didn't know him. Because when he got the gold and he hid it and he didn't produce another bag, what did he say? Well, uh, uh, why didn't you do something with it? And he said, oh, well, because I knew you. 
I knew what you were like. I knew what you were like. I knew you reap where you did not sow and you're this. I knew, I heard, I've heard about you. I know what you, I heard about your personality. I heard you could be a little rough. I heard you're a little unfair. I heard you get it. I heard you could lose your temper. I know you're a little selfish. I, I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard. And so he take it from him and give it to somebody who's heard a little different about me. <laughs> he missed it because he went on what he thought he knew. How many miss the who of Jesus and the kingdom because they think they know who Jesus is? Well, and I've had people double mind. Well, Jesus might help me, might bless me, might, he might entrust me, with, well, he might take it away too. He might make me well. What if he makes me sick? He might make me sick. He might bless me with a dog or he might stick his dome and pincher on me too to bite me. And so, I'm not sure. So I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just hide over here. Or I'll just get in line with everybody else and hope for the best. You see what I'm saying? What was the problem with the second son and the prodigal son? We don't know anything about the second son. The first son goes back. He says, I'll come to my senses. I know what I'll do. I'll go back to my father. He knew what to do. He knew the who. I'll go back to my father. What's wrong with the second son? He's standing out in the yard saying, well, you never gave me anything. And the father says to him, you idiot. Oh, that's me. <laughs> no, he didn't say, he's, he's, he's something like that. And he said, look, everything I have is yours. What was the problem? Why did the second son mess up this whole thing? Did he not know his father? He said, father. Yeah, he knew of his father, but he didn't know the who. He didn't know. See, we don't, he didn't know who his father was. That's a lesson Jesus is trying to say. There's a whole bunch of people who call him father that don't know him. You're acting out your life without knowing all who your father is. You don't know the who. You've never spent time with him. If this second son had spent time with his father, he would have known everything is his. This is a son who never spent time. But he, but he says, I, I've... But he said, but I've spent my whole life working for you. Oh, oh yeah, okay. You got a lot of how-to, don't you, hotshot? You got a lot of how-to, but you have no idea who I am. Never wanted to spend time with me. You just develop skill, 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 skill. Yeah, you can preach, you can sing, you can dance. You, you know the Bible. You got all these scripture memorized. You, yeah, you, I, I get it, I get it, I get it. And you have no idea who I am. There's no who in your life, but you sure got a lot of how-tos. That's most ministries everywhere. Nobody takes the time. Well, let me get into ending mode here. Some of you don't know me. Some of you do know me. I told you what I'm getting ready to do but in my life. But some of you do know I've been on some of the biggest stages in the whole world with some of the most famous Christian people in the whole world. I didn't know anybody. And I was blasted forward, invited, everywhere I went, they invited me to the front row and put me on the stage. Famous people I met. I've been on some of the biggest Christian stages in the whole world. I have been a big influence of revival in the whole world. Then I stepped back, and at that point, I tried to influence other ministries of how to move by the Spirit, how to get revival. This is how you move. Did you know the Holy Spirit, this is what they don't get, the Holy Spirit has a rhythm. There's a pace of the Holy Spirit. And I stand down here and I pick up for 20 some years, over 20 years, I've learned the pace, the rhythm. I look up and I see the rhythm, the pace of the whole, how fast is the Holy Spirit moving? What's the pace? What's the rhythm? And I try to teach it, and I say, listen, let me teach you how to go with the rhythm, how to go with the movement, how to go with the flow. And you can, you can be a world changer. You can have an outbreak of God's spirit. And what do you think I've met up with with over 20 years? Nope. Nope. I know how to do it. I know how to. See? They didn't want me to be a who in their life. It didn't matter 
that I have been entrusted with great wealth historically, written about in books, known all over the world, where I just make a phone call and people from other nations are gonna come and see me in a couple of weeks. They just found out I was coming and they're coming from other nations to see me. Okay, great, that's wonderful. But I could, I could, I could help a lot of people find and, and become a world changer, but they're, they're gonna get in line as a middle class religious person and say, no, I, I, got, an, I got the how to. I know how to. I know how to. Now, I want you to just think for a minute about your favorite singer or somebody online who's got, what, a billion bloggers or whatever, you know, and all these famous followers. They got, oh, they have how many followers? Oh, and they're just, oh, oh, and they got the followers, and they're great singers, and they're great songwriters, and they're famous preachers. I can already tell you five or ten years. They've already maxed out. They'll be no farther advanced in ten years than they are right now. You know Why? They are already doing the how-to that they know. They're doing everything they know how to do. They're going as fast as they can to do the how-to to get as big a ministry as they know how to do right now. Does that make sense? I mean, they're not sitting back saying, hey, we'll, take up. we'll just smooth it out. Okay, let's just coast. No, they're doing everything they know how to do, and they're not making history. So they've peaked, okay? They've peaked. And I've seen it, I look back 10 years, look back 20 years, same thing. They disappeared. They could have been history makers, but they, oh, I know how, I know how, I know how. Okay, let's end. How many have heard of the system of grace in the Bible? I know it's a silly question, of course you have. Let me tell you how it works and why people go wrong why it doesn't work for him. Okay, system of grace. This fella, the rich guy, it's a Roman system that G Paul used to describe, but he would have been called a patron. Say patron. patron. We get a Greek word, Greek, it's a little loose, but we get the word, uh, help me with that, Greek for father, uh, patriarch, pa patra, pa father. Okay, it comes out father, okay. So he's like a father figure. Why did he give them money, gold? He's a father figure, he's a patriarch. He's a father figure. Why did he give it? Just like I told you, he wants to learn wealth, he wants them to advance, he wants to advance the king, okay? He's a father figure. The, the guys that he gave it to are poor and they become his clients, okay? They get it and there's a circle, they just go round and round. Chances, listen, I got, I, got, I, got, I got a couple minutes. Okay, chances are the guy that got five probably got one at another time. Just, that's just speculation, but now he's advancing. He's in the circle of grace, see? Then the one who got one might have been his first time and failed. Okay, but anyway, okay, I'm about done. Okay, so there's the patron. He's got it all. He's got the money, he's got the wealth, he can impart. Paul, in the Bible, Paul, you heard of him, he would be a patron. He said to Timothy, remember when I laid my hands on you and imparted to you something? Great wealth, great anointing. They laid hands on the apostles and imparted anointing, right? Okay. Then there's the client. The client is the one who comes in. We are all sinners by grace. We have nothing, right? Who saved what? A wretch like me. I don't know if anybody actually believes they were a wretch, but we sing it anyway. And, uh, but so, and so we come in, we're all sinners. We're all, and what did Jesus say? Come in as a child, right? We come in as a child. That doesn't mean we act like children. That means we come in, a child doesn't have anything. We start in the lower, we are lower class with a mediator who's gonna take us somewhere, okay? Into a different class, gonna take us in. Now here's why this doesn't work for most people, okay? It's because of our culture. In their culture, the patriarch, patron, took the client in, gave them stuff, advanced them. And it was the responsibility of the client to build a relationship with the patron. 
Why is that such a revelation? Because that's not the world we live in. In our culture today, we look upward and it's up to God to make us feel better about ourselves. It's up to Jesus to make me feel worthwhile. It's up to my pastor to make sure I have a valid ministry. It's up to my church to make sure I feel loved and have a program and have a home group. It's up, it's up to my husband to make me feel valuable. It's up to my wife to make me feel needed. And we, we go through all of this, and then if we don't get it, what do we get? Then I'm disappointed. I have hurt feelings. I, I, I don't, they don't meet my needs. And we go to them, and we say, listen, I would like to impart to you. I'd like to lay my hands on you. I'd like to teach you the movement, the rhythm of the spirit, so you could be a world changer. And they look at me like, no, no, because I know who you, I know you. I've heard of you. I know you. You're probably in this for yourself. And you hurt my feelings. When you told me I needed to, when you're, you're telling, you're telling me now that my ministry is not all it should be and you want to improve it. Well, that hurts my feelings. And you go, uh, 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 you're going to go on the how-to when I'm offering you a who? You see what I'm saying? Well, that hurts my feelings when you try to, you try to improve me. When you tell me I need something more, when you tell me you don't have the rhythm of the Spirit, well, that hurts my feelings. That makes me feel bad about myself. What? You see, it's the, it's the responsibility of the client to build a relationship with God, to build a relationship. Well, when you tell me, well, you know, I just don't feel loved by God. What? It's your responsibility to make God feel loved. How, where did it all start? Love, a commandment, love God. You were commanded to love God. God wasn't commanded to love you. I mean, he may love you, but he wasn't commanded to do it. You are commanded to do every, listen, the reason we cannot advance in the power of the kingdom of God is it's all backwards. We're wanting God, we're wanting Jesus, we're wanting the church, we want the pastor, we want our parents, everybody above us, we want them to make us to feel better about us. So you don't have a who in your life. There's no who. And so you are left with what? The how to. The how to. Listen, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Listen. Look at these guys in the Bible who changed the world. They said Paul was not a good speaker. They were amazed that smelly fishermen had such an anointing. None of them had a how to. The tax collector, Matthew, he didn't have a how to. He knew how to count money. He didn't get saved, believed in Jesus, and said, I can't wait to write the Bible. I'm such a writer. Right? There, you look at them, and it says, listen, it says they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. You know how you get to be carried along by the Holy Spirit? You spend a lot of time with the who until he gives you the wealth. And I find preachers all over our country, all over the world, Christians all over in churches that they are going, they, they rely, they want to advance in God, but they're depending on the how to. Whether it be business, family, father, they, I'll, I'll just learn how to be a better business. I'll learn, I'll learn, I'm going to learn more how to. I've spent, I don't know how many hours in the who corner with God and it's changed my life forever. You get the wealth of the kingdom because somebody gives it to you. Yeah. You don't learn how to get it. Yeah. They didn't come and say, how do you make money? It says, you make money by me handing it to you. Yeah. And now starts the how to. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I guess I'll just end by saying it's a little bit disappointing to me. I've had so many pastors over the over the last over 20 years that could have been great. It could have been so great. But they've turned out to be one bag wonders. Because 
they say, I know how to. And they disappeared. They're nothing now. Some of them aren't even in the ministry. Because they cannot get any, they, it's an imperson. We, we just want to get in line and get our food stamps. Right? Just give me what's owed. I don't want to talk about relationship. I don't want to, I don't want to hear it's all in who you know. I want to get back to what I'm comfortable with. I get something from God because I'm skilled. Right? I'm a good dad. I'm a good worker. I'm an honest person. Advance me, God. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Not with God. And you can make huge advancement. Huge advancement if you know who. The who in the Bible. It's just a secret. You can go... If you will spend time with the who God and find the people, the who people who can impart to you and teach you the secrets of the kingdom of God, you won't just advance with God. You'll advance in everything. These people advanced financially. Advanced financially. And I, I want that for you. I'm not trying to win. I'm not anything. I'm not trying to impress. I'm just saying, man, we have a world that needs to have world changers. We need a world that needs history makers. And it's, it's not that hard. None of these people earned it. We say that, right? We say that. La lastly, you know, after the Smith and Outpouring and, I, and people were coming, all, I was going all over the world. People asked me, said, why do you think God chose you? I said, I did nothing. I did nothing but sought him. And I said, this is what I think happened. I think for one split second, God just felt so sorry for me. And he said, just give it to him. <laughs> just give it to him. I did not earn a thing. I have not earned anything to be up here today. Nothing. All of mine came with a rich guy came and said, here, here's some wealth. Take it to Poland. Let's stand up. Does that make sense to you today? Yeah. I'm just, I, uh, how to's are great, we need it. But, ooh, we, we need the, we need some who people in the kingdom. We need some who people that'll humble themselves and teach me that rhythm. Teach me that prayer. Teach me the Holy Spirit. I tried to say, I, I went to a church and uh, they said, we want to learn everything about revival. Everything, just anything. Said, Tell us anything. I went in, first of all, the lights were all wrong. I said, you got these, your, your lights are not matching anything, you know, they're just really bad. And, and then the music, you know, they get, they start out, the music started. We want revive. And the music was like a funeral home. And I said, I said you can't do that. What? There's no excitement. What? You, I, I know, you, nobody's going to be convinced you have anything here. And so I went through the whole thing. And... They, they told me they wanted all that. Just tell us everything. I, I taught them everything about it. And then a year goes by, and they did about two or three things. But they didn't do all of it. The rest of it they liked too well. And that's what I found out with Revival. I had pastors all over the world that just did a little bit. But they wanted to stay safe so they wouldn't do it all. You know what I'm saying? They could have had busted out their city and their church could have busted out in God. Kind of like just the rhythm and the power and the joy and the urgency that we see up here, you know, and the music pounding out, you know, and we're still learning to do it. Wouldn't do it. They knew how. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about it. I'm, I, I think I'm ready to be a history maker again. I just, one, one, one more round maybe. Maybe one more round. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe this word. We need a who in our lives. We need a who, someone that can help us get rich quick in God. How to is good, but that takes too long. We need someone to hand us the great wealth of the riches of the glory of God. I'm going to ask if there's, well, first of all, let's pray this. Jesus, let's have Jesus come in. Just pray with me and say, dear Jesus, 
I want you in my life. I believe you're the Messiah of the world. You died for me, rose again from the dead. You are the only Savior. You're the only way to the Father. I receive you into my life to be your servant from this day on. In Jesus' name. I just wonder if there's somebody who'd like to just step out right now and say, I feel something in my life. And I just want to come down and say, I feel I need to go after this who. I feel something in my life, and I just want to come and stand with you, Pastor Steve. This is not a show. It's not a show. It's not a performance. It's just I want to come and make a statement about my life right now. You don't have to be talented. You don't even have to be smart. I didn't earn this. But you would like to get something from God that maybe you don't deserve. You don't have to deserve it. It's a grace circle, right? It's a circle. You want to get in this circle and this circle. Did you know that most people get grace one time? Yes, sir. But it's a circle that goes round and round. So the, I'm guessing the one guy got one bag and this time he got five. Yes. And then it ended up being 10 and it ended up being 11. This is not his first, what do you call it, rodeo? Yeah. Father, I pray for these people right now. Do you all understand? When I get ready, I'm going to Poland and people are coming from other nations, le leaders, not people. These are not people, other people, but they're leaders from other nations said, I'm going to go. I got to meet this guy. They're younger than I. I've never met him before. Do you understand that? They immediately said, I'm going. If he's going to be there, I'm going. That can be you. I was a nobody with nothing, completely broken. And then heaven came down. Heaven came down. Heaven came down. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. For these people, which one? Or listening through those cameras at another church or another country even right now. Which one? Is there anybody here, Lord? Is there anybody here that can dive into the who, Jesus Christ? The mediator that can be led to the throne room of God by the grace, unmerited favor, right? Boldly into the throne of God that says, I'm willing to set aside myself to get the true riches of the kingdom. I'm willing to let go the wrong ideas I had about people, about God, about Jesus, about my pastor, about my church, about my past, about my wife. I'm, I'm not going to be that person as I know. I know who they are. And then you give it up and you don't do what you're supposed to do because you're hooked on things that are not true. You have a wrong idea about things. You have a distorted view. The one bad guy had a distorted view of life and of that person. Get rid of the distortion. See clearly. See clearly. See clearly. See. God, open their eyes of their heart to see clearly. You need me? Okay. To see clearly in the name of Jesus. Anybody here can do what I did. Anybody here can do what I did. If you just get to know the rich guy, the who. How-to's good, but I didn't use the how-to. I'm not going to use the how-to when I go to Poland. I'm going to show up and talk about the who. Get to know the who. Get to know the who.